Hi, my name is Emma, and you are here with our Ladies Angels. It's nice to be with you again today. Um, today I just wanted to talk about the Rosary, um, my experience with the Rosary, why I pray the Rosary, um, how long I've been praying the Rosary, and what, what made me start doing it in the first place. So I think the most important thing that I want to say about the Rosary is it's not just some beads and a cord and a crucifix that are meant to just hang up for decoration that do nothing that are boring it's it's a lot more than that it's a relationship with Jesus and um, in the past as someone told me the rosary is is about a relationship with Jesus I think I would have thought okay Good for you. That sounds great. <laughs> I, because I wouldn't have known what 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 is the relationship with Jesus and what does that look like. I I thought, you know, like he's in the sky. You know how how's he how's he gonna have a relationship with me? I can't see him. I can't hear him. Um, but as you may know, that the Bible is the living word of God. So it's, uh, it's alive. God is alive. God does care about you and he loves you. He died for you, but he's also alive and he wants to give you a life-giving relationship. And um, I think, think for anybody who doesn't already have a relationship with Jesus, and even if you do and you want to grow closer to Jesus, I think the rosary is the best place to start with that. And that is because it is a set of prayers that are completely biblical. So before I started praying the rosary, I I had heard the gospels many, many times at mass, and I, I had read them now and then, bits and pieces. But it wasn't until I began praying the rosary, especially the scriptural rosary, that I started thinking about the entire life of Jesus every single day the entire life and that's what happens when you pray all four rosaries you are are brought into a deeper relationship with Jesus where you think about um, you know the angel Gabriel coming to Mother Mary and announcing that God would like her to be his mother the mother of Jesus and Gabriel awaits that fiat from Mary where she will say yeah that sounds good or no thanks, no thanks, Gabriel. Go tell God, no, uh, no, no Messiah. <laughs> I know you guys are all waiting for me to say yes or no, and I'm gonna say yes. And then you you think about his his birth, um, and then the pur purification in the temple after his birth. You think about Jesus running away for three days, being lost in the temple. Then you are brought to the Luminous Mysteries, where you think about his baptism, the wedding feast of Cana, where the first public miracle happened with the intercession of our mother. You think about his public ministry, the transfiguration on the mountain, where he gives a glimpse to Peter and two of the other apostles of who he really is and what what he's, he's come for all of us to do, to draw us to greater holiness in uh, this life and the life to come. And then there is the, um, the institution of the Eucharist at the Last Supper, which is really important to think about the Eucharist every day, our, our life and our nourishment, which is Jesus' body, soul, blood, and divinity. Then we go on to the Sorrowful Mysteries, we think about, you know, each, each step of the passion. And it's like, if somebody died for you, it's really, it, it's really uncomfortable at first to think about, you know, suffering. Because we're all trying to avoid suffering in some sort of way. It's not fun. Suffering isn't fun. It, it's not, it's not a walk in a park. But when you unite it to Jesus' suffering... And you think about Jesus any time that you're suffering and all that he went through for love of you and love everybody that you love and have ever known, then suddenly, slowly by slow, slowly over time, you're going to notice that suffering 
is really beautiful with Jesus because he feels everything that we do out of love for us. He doesn't have to, but he chooses to. Because that's what happens when you love somebody. You want to be with them through everything, thick and thin. And then we're brought to the glorious mysteries um, with his resurrection and ascension into heaven, the descent of the Holy Spirit. Like, this is really good stuff to be thinking about every day. It's um, it's a mini gospel. To pray the rosary is a mini gospel. And it has completely transformed my life. It, When I pray the rosary, specifically at least three to four rosaries every day, the days that I do do that, everything is different. I have way less anxiety, way more peace, way more joy. I'm able to think of things through... Jesus's eyes because I'm literally walking through his entire life with him it you know it's so easy to get trapped inside our own heads and think about I have a lot of problems you know like nobody else has problems but suddenly it's like I have a lot of problems but look at the life of this person who loves me you know it, it really helps to for for those moments in time to surrender your problems to Jesus and just think about all those things. So while I'm saying the Hail Mary, which is all from the Bible, I'm not I'm not necessarily thinking about Hail Mary full of grace. The Lord is with thee. This is what Gabriel said to her. I'm thinking about the mystery that I'm meditating upon. And so like I for the third joyful mystery, which is the nativity, I will be thinking about Jesus, you know cold in a manger, you know, like, what's he going to eat the next day? Like, what what are Mother Mary and Je Joseph thinking about? They don't, they don't have a lot of money. They're in this strange land. They don't have friends. It's cold. Like, a lot of people would be crying and saying, like, God, why have you forsaken me? But instead, they're, they're joyful. This is the joyful mystery. So they're joyful in this. And they're, 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 they're humbled that God would want them to raise him and and choose them to bring him into the world. And and St. Joseph, you can think about him and how he was called to protect God. What kind of what kind of calling is that? That's a really big load on your shoulders, but it's a joyful gift. It is a joyful gift to receive Jesus. And, you know, before I, I prayed the rosary, I never thought about these things. I actually didn't care about these things because I didn't believe yet that God loved me. But in praying these rosaries over time, I, in, in meditating and thinking about the life of Jesus, I began to receive the living word, the living God who is healing and love himself. And he's begun to heal my heart all these years. And... I, in believing that he loves me, suddenly I do care about him too, you know, and the more that I think about him, the more that I spend time with him, the less and less I'm like myself with all my anger and stress and anxiety issues, and the more I can just be at peace in his presence, and that's really what the rosary is about. So, um, why did I start praying the rosary? As you can probably tell already, I really didn't want to for a long time. I grew up Catholic in the church. I, I, um, I received baptism. I received my first communion at age seven, my confirmation, I think, the next year. And um, it was beautiful. I, I was so proud to receive my first communion. I received my first rosary from my grandmother. I have Renette. And I was very, very proud. Now, now I got to receive Jesus, and I was, I was, so happy. Um, but I still fully, did, fully didn't understand what what a great gift that was. And um, when I when I was growing up, I, I remember my grandmother, Renette, telling me about Mother Mary, and how she loved me, and how she was my mother too, and how much Jesus loved me. And she encouraged me to pray to them, to Jesus. And uh, Mother Mary, she is not God, 
but she loves God and nobody loves Mother Mary more than Jesus does. So she prays for us too. When we say we pray to Mary, it's just like asking a friend on earth to pray for us. And so she prays for us too. And he is so happy. Jesus is so happy to answer his mommy. And so um, I, I had seen my godmother praying the rosary growing up. And I was always angry by it because I'm like, why can't we watch I Love Lucy instead? I wasn't praying the rosary. I didn't know how to pray the Hail Mary. I knew the Our Father. I didn't see any point in praying the Our Father more than once in a day. I'm like, I already asked for my daily bread. Why do I want to ask for it more? I don't, I don't even like bread that much. Didn't know what I was asking for. Didn't know how, how great a gift the Our Father was. Um, and so when I was 17, I found out that I had a tumor um, in the course of just a couple days. And it was massive. It was the size of a grapefruit. And it had to be operated on immediately. And I remember being really afraid. And I didn't know how to pray the rosary, but I just, I knew I needed God. And so I'm just like, please, like, can you, can you bring me into surgery with a rosary on my hand at least? Like, please, I just, I need, I need spiritual help. But I don't think I was allowed to take it in. But I remember when I woke up, I had the rosary wrapped around my hands. Like I was on the heaviest drugs because I had my stomach cut in half. It was a very, very big incision. And I was really out of it. But I remember the first thing that I asked is like, where's my rosary? I didn't know I had a rosary up until then. I just found one like in a closet or something. I'm like, please, like put on the rosary. And I just was so desperate just for some sort of sign, some sort of um, hope that things would be okay. And that's, that's what the rosary represented to me. And then it was later in that year, a few months later, I, I healed, which is good. Found out I have a lot more other health problems, which was the beginning of my real journey with Jesus. But a few months later, um, my grandmother was dying, Renette, and uh, I remember the night before she died, I was many hours away and my mom was with her, so I felt like, I felt very helpless, like there's nothing that I could do. But I'm like, the rosary, that's something, that's something that I could do. <laughs> and I remember like, just really looking online with dial-up internet, you know, waiting forever for a web page to download. And just so I could get get out some um, prayers, I'm like, okay, I have this, and I don't know what to do, and I don't know which end you start on. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm pretty sure each bead represents one prayer, and so that's good. I'm like, okay, I didn't even know what mysteries were. I didn't know how to meditate. I was just like, Our Father. And then I, I said, the Our Father. I'm like, okay, these are going to be Hail Marys, okay. And then so I did it, and I just... And, I, and it took me a really long time, and um, I had the assurance of peace that, that God, God was listening and He cares. And um, so that, that was the beginning of me praying the rosary. Thank you for joining me today with Our Lady's Angels, and um, I just want to encourage you to pray the rosary too. Okay. Thank you and goodbye. This is Emma. Bye-bye.